Welcome to my new video. Today we're going to be talking about wind speed and whether or not you can fly your drone, this happens to be the Mini 3 Pro, in a particular wind speed because it's a question that comes up an awful lot. I do lots of videos about drones and about how you can use them and use them in more places. For instance, I have a, a video about flying in flight restricted zones and how you do that. I've got videos about uh, DJI maps and how poor they are. So if you don't look at anything else, then check out maybe the, uh, the DJI maps one because it could save you your drone. So let's get into it. You can use really any forecasting app to look at the, way, the wind. I'm going to use UAV forecast on this occasion, but there are other forecasting apps. Uh, what I like about this one is you've got height at 400 feet that you can check out the wind speed as well. And obviously you can't measure that at the ground. The question really we've come about is, can you fly? So at the moment, the wind speed is 10 miles an hour. So how much can my Mini 3 take? For this, it's worth just checking out DJI website. Obviously, because it's a, mid, a Mini 3, you would have read the instructions, which is a legal requirement. I'm sure you've done that, so you probably know the answer to this. But let's look at DJI website. So I've just done a search, Google search, DJI Mini 3 specifications, and you can see the maximum wind res resistance is five, sorry, it's 10.7 meters a second. If we actually look, and we can do a, a Google Translate here, or Google Conversion, so 10 meters a second is about 22 miles an hour wind speed. So you can put that You can look, you could, so now you can see that we're, we should be good to fly. Obviously, if you go to the site and it's absolutely blowing a gale, then maybe you wouldn't. But what if it's touch and go? You might find that if it's touch and go, and say that was saying 12 or 15 meters a second, you might choose not to go. But equally, you might be there and think, well, it's actually not that windy. If your drone was to get blown away, then the chances are maybe your insurance company might look at it and say, well, hold on a minute, the forecast said it was 15 meters a second, which is beyond the specification of the drone. You might find that uh, if your drone flew away and crashed on somebody, the CIA might come and say, well, hold on a minute, you've flown beyond the specification of the drone. So it's worth having, for your protection as much as anything, a little wind meter, really, and you can test the ground speed at the ground and you can say to them, well, okay, I tested it at the ground and this wind speed was actually lower than what the forecast was. I proceeded then with caution and I felt I was safe to fly. So you've got a backup. You could take a picture of this on site before you flow. And at least then you can, you've got evidence, you know, that you've been responsible. What would you rather spend 10 pounds or lose what? Probably five, 600 pounds just to replace the drone. I know what I would do. So thanks for watching the video. Like I say, if you found it useful, I'd love it if you could click the subscribe button. If you see the question asked, you can at least share the video. It should be quite a short video. The information is out there for you to find because you shouldn't really be relying on some guy on Facebook that told you it was safe to fly. It's your responsibility really to find that information out and I've shown you how to do it. So thank you for watching my video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you, bye.